vlog. I'm gonna lay back here. Vlog 174. Hey, it's your pal, Jaime, the shut-in cartoonist musician. Yes, and I'm vlogcasting from a much, much cleaner and much more organized uh, Corn Tortilla Press World Headquarters, which is located on that island we call Alameda, which is in the San Francisco Bay. Yeah, yeah, we. Um, I'm about nine-tenths done um, cleaning this and everything. I mean, I, I got the shelving unit in. Thank you, Jelani Walker, for helping me with all that. And um, just got a couple little things to to file, like that little pile of papers right there you're probably looking at. That is, I have a box, one of those boxes down there. It has folders in it and files for like, you know, truck insurance, a vet for the cat, my health insurance, all sorts of things. It just goes in there. Um, warranties and stuff for God knows what I have. Um, like for instance, there, you guys might have noticed that maybe not last few days. Yep, got a new printer scanner. So I'm back in business, man, thank goodness. And it's a good one too, I like it. So, uh, today, uh, my little vlog here today, which I'll try to keep short, and lately I haven't been able to, I apologize, but hey, you know, <laughs> things happen. Um, got in touch uh, with a guy that I met in grade school. He was new at our grade school towards the end. Um, back in my day, uh, elementary schools went K through six, public schools, at least in California. And junior highs went 7th through 9. Yes, ninth grade in junior high school. And you didn't start high school till you were a sophomore. Though, we were the final class in California. All of us collectively in the state of California. The class of 76 was the last ninth grade. And the following year, uh, ninth, the class of 77 was 8th grade. 8th grade on. So, so it was 6th, 7th, middle school. Anyway, I'm digressing. See, I'm, I'm giving too many details you don't really need to know. But anyway, this kid I met... Um, back then we hit it off. Well, he was, um, uh, not going to mention his name cause I don't have his permission. I didn't really think I was going to talk about him today, but, uh, he has a common last name, but it has a really strange, slightly strange spelling. And through life, I've met a couple of people with that last name, but it was spelled differently. And I've seen the name from other places and it was spelled like those other people, but not like his. So well over a year ago, I'm on Facebook. I'm on some Sacramento, uh, Facebook page. And I see a woman's name on there, and her maiden name is that name with that spelling, and then her married name. And so I look at it, and I go, it's got to be. It's Sacramento and that spelling. So I sent her a DM, PM, whatever you call it, the message, the private message, and just say, hey, are you related to so-and-so? That's it. Didn't hear from her for over a year. Boom. Day before yesterday, get a... The DM from her, she goes, yeah, in fact, that's my brother. And I go, oh, my goodness. Well, I went to, you know, I read back. I went to, you know, elementary school and junior high and then high school, you know, a little bit. But he disappeared and blah, blah, blah. And she goes, well, I'll, I'll get a hold of him and see if, you know, he wants to have contact. And I said, fine, whatever. And yesterday morning, she writes back going, man, he'd love to hear from you. Here's his phone number. And I'm like, thank you. So him and I spoke for, boy, 45 minutes or so. And you know, a lot of the, uh, you know, whatever happened to so-and-so, and you remember the time, and ha, 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 what are you up to now, and how's life been treating you, and, you know, all that. And um, he showed up uh, at a really, at, at a good time in my life. I was hanging out with my best friend, Avery, and and this guy became part of us, you know, in and out. He was like the third, third guy, the third stooge, if you will. And a really acerbic, dry wit, even as a kid. And he still has it now. It's really funny. But uh, a crucial time. But as you guys know, if you've watched a couple vlogs ago, um, there was this family that I knew as a little kid. My mom was friends with them. And we used to live near them. And they used to babysit me before I started school. I think from like when I was two to like four. And then my mom left my dad. We moved to San Francisco for a couple of years. And then when we came back, that family was still there. And, you know, they still babysat me. Um, and I'm going to say this. Uh, this is where it might bum me out. And I, I've I've never really, I mean, my closest friends all know this. Um, and some acquaintances. But I'm not one to be, you know, talk about a lot of personal shit on this level. But, uh, yeah, so my mom, you know, because my dad died. And so when we came back from San Francisco... Uh, my dad killed himself. Basically, he called my mom and said, uh, 
if you don't come back to me, I'm going to kill myself. And my mom's like, I'm sorry, I'm not coming back to you. He was, he was abusive uh, physically. I mean, he was just an abusive man. And so basically he says, okay. And he shot himself on the phone while on the phone with my mother, killing himself. So, um, yeah, I, I found out that day and it was terrible. It was horrible. Now I'm not asking for sympathy. I'm like, Oh, you poor guy. It's like, you know, like I said, this is life. Everyone has their journey. Everyone's got a different journey, man. There's some that are far worse than mine, you know, and there's a lot that are a lot better and some probably the same as mine, just slightly different, you know, just different tacos, right? Just different. So, um, I'm not going to lie. It sucked growing up without my dad it, it, or having a dad. It really did. It sucked. I mean, my, you know, my heart broke. My heart's been broken since 1967. It was just broken. And, um, you know, I, I don't know what was going on in my dad's head. I have no idea that I've come to grips over years that, you know, that's something, something was going on. You know, clearly people that get pushed that far mentally, who knows? Who knows what, what, what darkness is in there? And I don't want to know. Um, the interesting part is uh, a couple of my siblings, there's five of us. He had five kids <laughs> that we know of. And uh, my oldest brother and sister, my br brother's no longer with us, but uh, my oldest brother, sister, and I, I remember going to lunch with him somewhere. And we had the discussion. I brought it up. Of course, I go, what happens if dad was still alive? Would we be much better off? And we all kind of went, mm, maybe not. Maybe it was good. I mean, sorry he died, but maybe it's good he wasn't in our life. So, interesting. But I bring this up because of um, that family that baby said. They were there for a crucial time in my life, you know, where, you know, things were spinning out of control. My mother was just a mess. And uh, my mom had this personality, and I have it a little bit, but she had this personality where when she was really stressed, like in that situation, she would work more. She just worked more. Clean the house, set things up. I mean, and I could see now, in retrospect, that when everything was in order, clean, and looked great, then life was great. And I could see I had the same personality. When I was in kindergarten and first grade, and my dad died after, towards the end of, end of first grade, um, I wasn't the class clown. I wasn't a, a wallflower either. I participated in things, but... I was pretty much content drawing and just being my own. Once my dad went, it took me years to kind of realize this. Suddenly I was this gregarious, you know, kind of loud kid, like ADD. And this went on all through school. And back in the 60s and 70s, for those that might not know, they weren't equipped back then. They didn't, I don't think they knew of ADD or ADHD and, and uh, PTSD, you know, and post-traumatic stress disorder and and all this other stuff. And in a six-year-old, you know, I'm not equipped. I don't understand that. That's worldly stuff. It was well beyond my little cartoon watching, you know, ass, you know, back then. So again, not, oh, but it just, it all made sense, you know? So I was always like the class clown. I was always a gregarious guy, even to this day. But I was an incredibly sad child, incredibly sad. I spent a lot of time alone, mostly on purpose. I, I didn't know that then, <laughs> but you know, I would just walk for miles and hours on the railroad tracks and just play with stuff. And, and when I had friends, I liked it one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, once it started getting group, groupy, you know, I would hang, but I'd realize uh, I'm not comfortable. And I realized that by making everyone laugh around me, that meant everybody was happy, which then meant I was happy, which meant life was happy, right? Interesting, interesting stuff. Oh, I hope I didn't bum you out today. But anyway, this guy talking to him on the phone and then the family that, that you know, helped me out immensely. I mean, in my heart, these people live forever. I'm so grateful to have people like that. And my point of this whole thing now, uh, that now your nine and a half minutes of your life has been eaten up by my gabbing self, is that reach out. You've heard me say this before, but, you know, I think you should reach out to people. I think we should all reach out to people. It's good to, to have contact. I mean, you don't have to. Someone from the past you're wondering about, look for them. Maybe they're looking for you. You know, take the call, man. Answer the email or however, the smoke signals. I don't know how they're getting a hold of you. And uh, 
touch base. You know, you don't have to go out and pick out curtains with them or anything. It's just touch base, make the connection, get some closure. I have relatives and friends who aren't speaking to family members because of some bullshit. And, you know, I don't mean like, you know, some like, oh, they stole all our money and killed mom or something. Not like that. Just stupid shit. I mean, mostly I the couple I'm thinking of is alcohol is involved. So there you go right there. It's, it's, you know it's frivolous. But life is short. You can live a hundred years in the time continuum. It's like that. We're not here very long. We're really not here very long. But now, playing devil's advocate, if you're cool not knowing where anybody is or or if you want to hate your sibling or da da da, that's cool. That's cool, man. You just go ahead. You go ahead. You you do you. But I'm just saying that um, you know. If it's just lurking in the back of your mind, go ahead and do it. What what more can happen, you know, especially during these times? So that's where I'm going to leave you. <laughs> I'm not a deep dude, man. I don't know how this stuff comes around, but it's just things I've been pondering. And I'm very grateful to find pe positive people from the past. I'm incredibly grateful for the positive people that are in my life now. And who knows how longer I'm going to go you know, and all the people that are gonna that are waiting out there, I'm gonna meet along continuing this journey. And hopefully on your journey, you guys are, are doing well and meet a lot of positive people and recognize it and embrace it. All right, everybody, I'm gonna leave you with that. Um, if you have to go out today, don't forget to mask up. Uh, we did this morning, did all the shopping. Uh, don't forget to wash and sanitize those hands. Keep distance away from people, but my suggestion is stay home, just stay home. We got a flatness. It seems to be working, but it's still kind of, you know, kind of grunting. <laughs> but most importantly, be kind to yourself and be kind to others. All right. Don't forget to subscribe down below. Thank you for joining me. I truly mean that. And I'll see you guys next time. Thanks.